Welcome to Jasper's educational series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about cancer survivorship. My name is Michelle and I'm one of the care coaches here and I'm joined by Sarah, another one of our care coaches. So Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Sarah. I'm a certified exercise oncology instructor. Prior to Jasper Health, um, I have experience in oncology for about five years, and I came with experience in implementing and designing individualized exercise plans for anyone with a cancer diagnosis, and now I'm here at Jasper as a care coach. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and again, my name is Michelle. I'm a care coach here. I'm also a licensed social worker, certified personal trainer, and I teach yoga, Qigong, and meditation. P prior to joining the Jasper team, I worked as a coordinator for an integrative oncology program for almost 10 years. And there I worked with patients and caregivers, both during and after treatment, to help them incorporate healthy lifestyle strategies to complement their care and improve their overall quality of life. Um, I'm very passionate about sharing the practices of yoga, qigong, and meditation, as well as have a strong interest in the be benefits of healthy eating and exercise, both during and after treatment. So uh, we'll go over the agenda for today. We're going to talk about what cancer survivorship is, um, and with a particular focus on the post-treatment phase of survivorship, uh, we'll talk about what some of the challenges are during that post-treatment phase, as well as um, go over the survivorship care plan, which includes the end of treatment plan. Um, and then we'll finish up with uh, a guided meditation to sort of round out the program. All right. So what is cancer survivorship? Survivorship is considered anyone with a cancer diagnosis from the day they're diagnosed throughout their treatment and beyond. <clears throat> the number of cancer survivors has been steadily increasing um, over the last several decades. There's an estimated 18.1 million cancer survivors in the United States alone. And with the advancement in treatments, uh, this number will only continue to grow. And so it's important for us to focus on survivorship. And that means focusing on the health and well being of the patient, including physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, and social effects of cancer. Jasper maintains an extensive library of articles that address these issues and much more. And Michelle, just to reiterate uh, what the definition of survivorship, so that includes anybody with a diagnosis. So from the day of diagnosis, you are considered a survivor. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes. And then so for the purpose of this video specifically, we'll be addressing the post-treatment survivorship. Right. Yes. That'll okay. be our focus for today. Although many of the things that we're going to talk about um you know, could apply to people in treatment, especially when we talk about um, the sort of healthy lifestyle um, tools and interventions and resources. Yes. Right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what some of these post-treatment challenges may be. Um, the first thing that I usually hear from patients is that they feel um, uneasy about the less frequent contact with their healthcare team. Um, during treatment, there's constant contact with the doctors and nurses. Um, and so when that ends, um, it's very normal to feel uneasy about the less frequent checkups and um, perhaps to start having concerns about a recurrence and whether or not you're being followed closely enough. So these are all normal feelings um, that you may have. And you may also find that it's difficult to transition away from those frequent visits because you've developed relationships with your doctors and nurses and the staff and, and your oncology officer at your cancer center. Um, again, there can be concerns about recurrence. Um, like, am I being followed closely enough? 
Um, you may find that you feel anxious or depressed um, as you begin to process that emotional toll from your treatment. It's common that while going through treatment, you're kind of in that um, fight mode and there's um, constant appointments and testing and going for treatment. Um, and once that's all completed, it's not unusual to find a lot of these emotions um, bubbling up and um, that you need time to process. Wow, what did I just go through? Right. I hear oftentimes they feel, you know, you almost kind of like you're being dropped off from care. You have all these, all this well-rounded support and everybody wants to help you and guide you. And then after that's finished, it's like now mm. it's really when that time comes to process everything that the emotional toll. Right. And it can often be difficult for family and friends to understand this and understand how you're feeling. Um, uh, oftentimes it's, you know, a time of celebration, I'm done with treatment. Um, but yet you may not feel like celebrating, you may still be dealing with side effects. Um, and, uh, you know, um, have, it may be difficult to explain to family and friends that you may look well, but you may not feel well, you may not feel fully recovered. Um, and so it's important to be able to have those conversations with family and friends to explain how you're feeling, uh, but also to ask for help where you need it. And the other thing I think is really critical at this time is to make sure you schedule that self-care time as you begin to um, fall back into a quote unquote, more normal routine, um, it's important to remember that you still need to take that self-care time and time to allow your body and your mind to heal. Um, I often say, schedule that self-care time, write it on the calendar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so important. Mm, yeah. And then, you know, you can have long-term and late stage side effects. So um, for example, neuropathy, lymphedema, there can be weight gain or loss, changes in appetite. Um, there can be changes in your skin or your nails. And so it may take some time for uh, some of these long-term or late stage side effects to resolve themselves. And then there's the issue of returning to work if that's something that's gonna be happening for you. Um, important to develop a plan around your return to work. Talk with your employer. Um, see if it's possible to perhaps come back in a limited capacity to start um, or maybe be able to work from home part of the time. Um, you might want to uh, reach out to a contact in your human resources department. You can also um, consult with some of the nonprofit organizations that um, Jasper partners with, as um, some of them do offer support around um, the returning to work or working through treatment. I know a lot of people find, you know, going to work even, even during treatment or after is kind of an escape because it's something that they can really focus in on and, you know, bring that laser focus to a specific task and it kind of takes their mind off of it. But yeah, giving yourself that grace and understanding of knowing that you just came from, you know, a major life transition and a change and you can't just hop right back into work at all times and giving yourself that, that time to adjust to that and letting your employer know is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, for sure. And also get support from your family. Um, so, you know, you may still be finding that you're feeling fatigued and um, getting some help around the house, uh, you know, divvying up the duties um, around the house as you transition back into um, a work schedule. Yep. Not being afraid to ask for help. Yeah. It's a very important thing. Um, now, Jasper's daily tracker can be very helpful in terms of recording your symptoms and side effects um, in this post-treatment phase. And then you have that record um, that you can share with your health 
care team. And this is going to improve your symptom control, your physical functioning, and your overall quality of life. Um, you can also seek out support from a coach, um, a therapist, or participate in a post-treatment support group. So these are just a few of the um, tools or strategies or resources that um, you may want to tap into during this post-treatment phase to address these challenges. Absolutely. I know you mentioned briefly about the support groups, um, but do you find or would you recommend keeping and continuing that peer support, whether it's in a group setting or a virtual setting or even finding one person, if you if you like that one-on-one -on -one connection to a peer, do you find that that's helpful in this post-treatment survivorship phase? Yes. I think, you know, we know that that social connection can be um, so crucial to our overall well-being. And um, during this post-treatment phase, to be able to connect with people who understand what you've been through and understand where you are in this moment. And it's a great way of also um, getting information that can be so valuable to you um, to advocate for yourself, to ask questions of your medical care team. So yes, um, whether it's the one-on-one -on -one support, peer mentorship, or um, a support group can be a very valuable um, resource. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your family and friends are wonderful too in terms of talking and getting everything out and they wanna help in the best way that they can, but there really is something valuable to be said about having that somebody else that has gone through what you have gone through. Yes, yes, absolutely. for sure. And then, you know, we're gonna talk about this survivorship care plan because this can really be your roadmap during your post-treatment phase. So the first part of that survivorship care plan is the end of treatment summary. So this is a clinical summary of your diagnosis, um, the type of cancer, the location, um, any subtype, histology, staging, um, the treatments that you had, which could include surgery, um, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, radiation, um, all of that information would be in your end, end of treatment summary. Also any ongoing clinical needs, um, which may include treatment for ongoing side effects, genetic counseling, um, or just monitoring of potential side effects of treatment. Also any psychological, social, or financial support that was offered to you during treatment. So if you um, met with a social worker, um, if you were participating in therapy or support groups, um, if you received financial assistance of some type, all of that would be included in um, your end of treatment summary. So this is something that um, you would also then share with your primary care physician, as well as any specialists that you may see moving forward. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Jasper partners with um, many nonprofit organizations that offer support to cancer patients at all stages of their cancer journey. Um, so that would include this post-treatment phase. So let's look at then the survivorship care plan. So that includes the end of treatment summary, um, as well as any recommendations for follow-up care. So this would include how often you're gonna um, be seeing your oncologist um, and any other specialists that you may need to follow up with. It'll include any testing that needs to be done medications that you're on, and the long-term or late-stage side effects of your treatment. Additionally, the survivorship care plan rec is going to make recommendations for healthy living. So for example, maintaining a healthy weight, exercise, um, social connections. Uh, we talked about that with uh, support groups or peer mentors, and stress management. Um, so all of these areas are included in the survivorship care plan and really important um, to giving us sort of a guide, a template, a roadmap 
uh, for this post-treatment phase of the cancer journey. Right. It sounds like just a summary or a plan to the create for yourself to best support yourself in this, you know, adjusting to your new normal after this diagnosis, realigning uh, your life to values, you know, your values, I'm sure shift and change throughout the diagnosis. So it's taking that time to reflect back on the diagnosis and your treatment and having a plan going forward to create ways to best support yourself, um, you know, through this new normal. Right, right. Exactly. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so how do you get this survivorship care plan and a treatment summary? Many cancer centers and oncology practices routinely provide this. Um, and if it's not provided to you, um, you might want to ask. Um, if there is not a, you know, formalized plan, you can access the template yourself. Um, one place is through the ASCO website, um, and then in consultation with your care team, um, you can um, fill in all of this information for yourself. Also, uh, during this time, you can connect with a care coach who can help you to set goals and manage the physical and emotional effects of treatment by providing individualized tools and resources. You can um, set up short and long-term goals, for example, making a weekly or a monthly exercise plan. Um, of course, we always want to be mindful of any limitations and be sure to get um, that cleared with your medical team before you start an, any kind of exercise program. We can also um, work on healthy eating habits. Um, it's a, a fun way to do that is when you're preparing your meals to have a colorful plate, right? Lots of variety. The more colors you have, the more variety you're going to have in your diet. And, um, and also considering uh, if you're still having some appetite um, loss, uh, you might want to consider eating smaller, more frequent meals. So these are all ways that you can incorporate um, healthy lifestyle um, into your um, your survivorship, your post-treatment survivorship time. Um, another thing you might want to look into is if there's a nutritionist at your cancer center and um, you can discuss a nutrition plan that's going to um, support you during the post-treatment phase. Right. Yeah, it sounds like at the end of this diagnosis or at the end of treatment, I'm sorry, that it's that time to advocate for yourself on the resources that you need going forward. Advocate for yourself on what you want to know about, you know, your life post-treatment, the, the nutrition that you should be taking in, your exercise plans, all of those things may have changed since treatment. So it's time for it allow yourself that opportunity to really advocate with your medical team on what you need to, you know, move going forward. Right, right. And um, so this survivorship care plan and the Jasper Digital Oncology platform can support you throughout this post-treatment phase, um, providing you with the psychological support and coaching to help you stay organized and, con and connected. And this is going to be um, critical for improving your overall quality of life and um, supporting you through this transition into your post-treatment phase. As Sarah, you said earlier, that new normal, um, this survivorship care plan and the Jasper digital oncology platform, um, the support of a coach can all be um, tremendous resources for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep it. And I think the, the digital app, the Jasper's app is really important because you can keep all of this information in the app and it's right there. You know, you don't have to keep remember, remembering it or putting it in a couple different places. It's all, it can all be downloaded right there. And it really provides that maximum organization. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So now I would love to share, um, a meditation practice with you. This is one of the many um, tools that our care coaches offer uh, to our Jasper members. And um, so if you'd like to, please join me 
Um, find a comfortable seat. Uh, I know our picture there has someone sitting on the floor in easy pose, uh, but you don't have to do that. You could sit in your chair, you could lie down if you'd like to, uh, whatever feels most comfortable. It's good to have both feet planted on the floor and lengthen your spine a bit, maybe even pull away from the back of your chair, just to have this sense of being alert and fully present. Your eyes can be open or closed, really up to you. If your eyes are open, you might just soften your gaze a bit, maybe gaze downward. You can rest your hands in your lap. Your palms can face up or down, or maybe fold one hand inside of the other. And just notice how it feels for the body to come into stillness. Whenever you feel ready, you might bring your attention to the sensation of your breath. And there's no need to change your breathing in any way. Just bringing awareness to the flow of the breath as it moves in and out of the body. The breath comes and goes much like the waves of the ocean. And although our intention may be to stick with the breath, you might notice that your attention wanders. You can be distracted by thoughts or sounds or other sensations in the body. And that's very normal, right? It's the nature of our mind to think. And so we just acknowledge the distraction of the thoughts or sounds and then find our way back to the breath once again. You might notice your breath right at the tip of your nose, feeling the flow of the air, maybe even noticing a coolness as you inhale and then a warmth as you exhale. Or you might sense the breath in the rise and fall of the chest or the expanding and release of the abdomen. So wherever the breath is most vivid for you, allow your attention to rest there. And again, if you become distracted, no worries. You simply acknowledge the distraction and come back to your breath without any judgment, without giving yourself a hard time, maybe even being a little curious. Noticing where your attention is right now. If your mind seems to be very busy, you could always place more emphasis on the breath. 
either by counting, breathing in for one, breathing out for two, and counting to 10, and then starting over. Or you could use a word or a phrase, breathing in peace, breathing out calm. Before we end our meditation practice today, I'd like to share a little loving kindness practice with you. So I'm gonna suggest some simple phrases. These are kind wishes that we can send to ourselves. And if you'd like to, you could place your hands over your heart. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. And may I be at ease. And then if you've placed your hands over your heart, you can return them to your lap. Maybe slightly deep in your breath as you bring awareness into the weight of your body, sitting in the chair. And then begin to gently move your body. You might wiggle your fingers and toes, maybe circle your shoulders. And then gently opening your eyes and taking in the world around you. So thank you so much for practicing uh, meditation with me. And then in conclusion, we just wanna thank you so much for um, joining Sarah and I today to talk about cancer survivorship and the post-treatment phase. Um, specifically. Um, please keep an eye out for our July newsletter uh, that will contain um, information about any upcoming educational videos um, that we have. And again, thank you so much. Have a thank wonderful you, day. <laughs>